Hey guys, each of the three next studies is unbelievable for some specific reason. They are just amazing. I won't say too much more. Keep watching. Before we continue, I want to mention this studies playlist on my channel. There are beautiful positions, they are all explained step by step, and they will help you to train and improve your calculation. Go there and take a look. So let's start with our first study. In this position it is white to move and white is winning. And this is unbelievable because in this position white has only three pawns as black has six pawns. But even more important, white doesn't have a free pawn or a passed pawn. So how is this winning for white? Well, uh, the way to win here is like this. We need to play in the first move b5. And the idea is that after c takes b5, king goes to b4. Black king is stalemated. And there will be some problems because of that. Here, uh, black has two main options. They can move the e pawn or the f pawn. So let's see what happens after e6. Then white can just play e4. And then, as black does not have any move, they will have to move the f pawn, either f6 or f5. Either way, we capture. And in the next move, black has to play e5. That's the only move they can play here. And then we have a pawn here we can promote very soon. but First of all, let's make sure black can play something in the next move. So let's play king b3. They can move now anything they want. And then we are promoting very soon and winning the endgame with our queen. So after king b4, if instead of moving the pawn, black moves the f pawn, like f6 or f5, then we are just going to capture on f6. And after black recaptures, then we play e4. Again, black has only one move here, and it is the move f5. But this is a little surprising. Here we don't capture, because if we do that, this is going to be a draw. Um, we are trying to win here. So white can play e5, then f4, then e6, then f3, then e7, and then f2. And then if we promote to queen, black is also promoted to queen, and they have four extra pawns. We don't have any good check, so black is going to be winning. But there is a surprise. We don't have to promote to queen. Look at black king. Black king is smothered over there. So all we need is a check. And if we promote to a knight, uh, we can get that check. After black plays any promotion, then we have checkmate with knight c7. So let's see the whole solution. b5 and then king b4, forcing black pawns to move. The main line is f5, then we just capture, and we force the f pawn to move. Now this pawn is going to be a passed pawn, and we are winning because then we are promoting and giving checkmate with our knight on c7. This is the second study. It is white to move, and white is winning. Black has two extra pawns, but the main reason why this study is unbelievable is about the line white is going to use to win the game and mainly about the finish of the sequence. So let's see what is going to happen here. There is a beautiful forced sequence. We start the line with knight e3. As I was saying, black has two extra pawns, but there's something very important in this position and it is the turn to play. When both kings are exposed, like here, the one who has the turn to play has a, an important advantage. So, knight d3 check, the king comes to g3, but we need to see what happens after king h4 or king h2. King h4, we have checkmate by playing queen g4. And king h2, we have checkmate in two or three moves by playing this sequence, with queen g4 also checkmate. So, after knight d3, the main line is going to be king g3, and then we give a check here on g4. One more time, black can try king h2, but then we will have a queen g2 with checkmate, so the main line is here. And then we play this specific move, queen f4 check, and black shouldn't come here, because then we can play queen f1 and queen g2, it would be like this. So king here, check, and then checkmate. So after queen f4, black needs to come either here or here. Either way, we will play the same move, queen f1, forcing the king to go to d2. Notice black cannot capture the knight on e3, because then white can play a skewer with queen e1, and then queen takes queen. So, after queen f1, the only move is king d2, and we continue queen d1 check. One more time, black cannot capture the knight, so they might try king c3, and then we could try king, uh, sorry, queen to c2. 
two moves for black, king b4 or king d4, but king d4 is not going to work. We have a fork with knight f5, so they might want to play king b4, and then another very specific and strong move, and it is this queen b2 check. Two alternatives for black, either king a5 or knight b3. King a5 we have made in two with knight c4 and then queen b6. So probably the main line is this knight b3, but then white is going to win with a beautiful, stunning finish of the game. And it is this move, queen a3. And the idea is that, well, there's a skewer, so if black king does not take, we are getting the queen on e7. But what happens if the king takes? Well, then we have checkmate in one by playing knight c2. So let's see the whole line so you can enjoy how unbelievable it is. Knight e3 check, queen e4 check, and then queen f4. The king continues running over the board, and then queen f1, queen d1, all these moves are forced lines, as we could see. Queen c2, queen b2, and after knight b3, the finish queen a3, and knight c2 checkmate. And this is the third study. Here it is white to move, and white is getting a draw. And this is unbelievable. Why? Well, in this position, black has this pawn here on g5, and there's nothing white can do to stop that pawn. I mean, the king is clearly away from the pawn. The king, the king is not going to be able to stop the pawn. This pawn is promoting. Also, white pawns can do nothing about that. And and then, well, we have passed pawns, but black king is right in front of our passed pawns. So what are we going to do about this? If I'm playing this, I think I could resign right now. Well, actually, there is a way to get a draw for white. And it is by playing a, some very subtle and special idea. Let's analyze a little. There is this idea where uh, we can play like king g6, and after g4, maybe some h7, and then put the king over here and try to get some stalemate position. So after the pawn goes to g2, we can try king g6. But then the pawn is promoting to queen with check, and we're going to lose the game. But that might be some idea over there. Maybe uh, we could lose a tempo during the line and make it work a little better. That's the right plan. So instead of going directly to g6, we can play in the first move king f6. And the idea is that when we go to h6 in the end of the line and black promotes, it's not going to be check, it's going to be stalemate instead. So black can play here g4, then we play king g6, they can play here g3, also king g8 is an option but it's not going to change too much. We continue with the same plan and with the tempos we will get exactly the same position in the end of the line. So we focus on g3, h7, g2, and king h6. And in this position, when black promotes to queen, this is going to be a stalemate. We need to analyze very seriously what can happen if black under promotes. Say, promotion to a rook, for example, is not going to be a problem. It's again a stalemate. And also, under promotion to knight or bishop, again, not a problem, because there won't be a sufficient material to be able to win the game, so it's also going to be a draw. So let's see the whole sequence, king f6, first move, wasting a tempo, but this is going to be working very well for white. Now king g6, and now we self-stalemate our king, going to h6. And this is getting a beautiful and surprising draw for white. The question for today, which of the three studies did you like the most? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you on the next. Thank you.